Welcome back. Uh, Ask Coach Nate, episode number 15. Today, we're going to discuss how you can develop a long-term perspective on your uh, health and fitness. I know this is a common topic for people who uh, get into the fitness world, right? Like we've got fast food and six minute abs. And we all know that while the promise of those things is wonderful, the reality is very different. Um, most things take time and the best things take lots of time, right? So how can you develop a long-term perspective on, on health and fitness to keep you motivated and overcome any plateaus uh, that you reach? So Nate, why don't we start off with you and um, talking about like uh, just how you developed a long-term perspective. Obviously, like you focused your career on on health and 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 fitness. Just give us your kind of take on long-term uh, thinking. I mean, I think that I kind of stumbled into it almost as a default mode of thinking because I got into running and I wasn't especially good at it, but I found that I really liked it a lot. And I saw gains that... Uh, inspired me to keep working at it. So I worked at running for several years and then I like diversified and got into cycling. But by the time I did that, I still had the perspective that I just wanted to get better than whatever I'd previously done. And that is potentially a project with a nearly unlimited runway. And it just kind of ha happened that I got good enough that I could get into racing and was able to put a lot more time and effort into it than maybe most people have the luxury of doing just because I, um, I don't know, learned enough about how to train effectively and had enough uh, physical ability to do that. But for me, it was just always embedded in the project of like trying to be healthy and enjoy having a body that functions well. And to me, that is a lifelong project because like you can't just uh, do the work in your 20s and then just be healthy the rest of your life. Like you have to keep doing it. So that has always been in my mind. And then as far as like sports performance goes, I knew that there's, um, a lot of stuff that just takes time to really build up uh, the adaptations that you want to like get to your very best. And if you look at like top level athletes, a lot of times, you know, they're at it for years. Like they start when they're 12 and then they like go to the Olympics when they're 20 and then they maybe go to like three Olympics or something like that. And it's like, it's a huge long-term project if you want to be, um, you know, if you want to have like the most satisfying experience that you can as an athlete, if, if, if that's a goal of yours. Um, so it just was like embedded in the project of like being healthy for my life and trying to explore my athletic possibilities. Neither of those were remotely short-term projects, you know, like maybe this year I want to like set a PR on a climb, but seeing how fast I could possibly go on that climb might take several years or longer, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you still maintain a lot of KOMs around, uh, around Berkeley. We're joking. It's been a 20 year project for you to, yeah. To continue to like set set new goals and uh, and achieve them. Yeah, yeah, it's fun and like that's a, a thing too. Like, um, I really enjoy the process of just doing it, and I can't imagine um, feeling like I'm thriving in life without continuing to be active in training. Just like you, like you, you, like if you stopped running for a week, you'd probably like just go crazy. Um, but each year, I look for things that are like uh stimulating and like fun to shoot for so like last year i had a couple of ones that i wanted to get back that i had lost by a few seconds to some <laughs> some people that i know <laughs> i love it amazing um okay so why don't we start with people who are perhaps new uh to fitness um and like how can they stay motivated and i think the example that that we both have talked a lot about and i like to offer up is you know the person who sits out and they run a marathon so they do the training, they join a group and they get really into it and have some friends and they do the marathon. And then what do they do? Right. That was me. Like I did this running and I was into marathons and then I would run one. And then I didn't really know where to do with myself after that. And so I ended up back drinking uh, Guinness at the pub, which, which I love, but, uh, but is not necessarily great for my health and fitness. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that that type of goal is like, actually pretty perfect for the beginner is some sort of goal that's going to be like six months to a year out so that, um, you know, the, the first weeks and the first few months of getting into any kind of fitness program, whether you're going to the gym and lifting weights or you're getting into running or you're getting into cycling, like you're going to see a lot of gains up front, but you're still not going to be able to run a marathon just because you picked up running two months ago. So it's nice to have something that like is exciting and very 
uh, motivating and it's something that you know that you can complete in some sort of like intermediate timeline. Um, and I think that all, oftentimes embedded in something like a one year marathon program or like a six month marathon program is that you might do some like 5Ks and 10Ks leading up to it. So it's nice to think like, oh, like next month I'm gonna run a 5K, two months from now I'm gonna run a 10K and then a half marathon and then a marathon or whatever it is. Um, I think that those are great, that, that's like a perfect system to like get you through that first year, let's say, of training. But like you said, after that, it's like, oh, you, you did the thing, you like checked that box. I think that throughout that process of getting into um, accomplishing that goal, it's good to look for things that you really enjoy, like just, you know, daily and weekly, like, do you really love those group runs on the weekend? Do you love those group rides that you do with the club? Um, maybe not right the second with COVID, but like normal times, like, do you love the, the Saturday group ride? Um, or do you love like going out and doing those hard workouts? Like whatever it is that you really enjoy about the process, think about what goals you could set after the marathon or after your first century that will help provide motivation that you know is going to be exciting for you. Um, so it could be to like go out and do it faster. It could be to um, diversify and like do other events or to other types of um, accomplishments that are like very task oriented that like, you know, maybe you did a century, maybe you want to do like a double century the next time around. Um, and then just look for ways to like create systems that are reinforcing. So if you have training partners that you meet up with, or you have a training plan that you follow, or you have like certain benchmark workouts that you just like keep cycling through and you keep trying to incrementally make them better. Um, any of those things that are like more process oriented and help you make incremental gains over time can be very effective. Yeah, you know, the, uh, I think the most motivating thing for me to turn health and fitness into a like long-term lifestyle was when I incorporated it into my commute, which is very ironic now because very few people are are commuting. But um, um, when I decided like, oh, I'm gonna ride my bike to work every day or, or something like that, um, that's where I saw the big gains. And like, uh, I was very inspired by two things. There was uh, people I was riding with on the weekends and I met a guy who told me he commuted every day by bicycle to work. And I just was like astonished that you could do that much riding. I think he said it was like 12 miles or 50 miles one way. So he rode like 20 or 30 miles every day. Like I, I just couldn't believe it. And he, it, we had this long conversation around this long bike ride. He told me about like how he like changed at work and like how he brought his clothes in and all this stuff. And there's this whole culture to it, which was all new and very fun and entertaining. And, and that was wild. And so I got really into that because I just thought like, what a great goal and what a great way to incorporate this into your, to your like life. And the other thing was like, very similar idea, but I read about a group of people who run to work every day and they would meet up uh, in, uh, in Marin in California and run across the Golden Gate Bridge and do like a 10 mile run, which like that was even more intense. I was like, wow, like running every day, a distance like that. And so um, for people who don't live in the Bay Area, and I know most people are probably listening to this saying like, hey, well, of course you run across the Golden Gate Bridge in the morning. Like that's probably the most beautiful run <laughs> i could imagine in the entire world seriously uh but when i went to london um about a year and a half ago i found this was actually really popular there too there's actually a lot of people who are into ultra running and ultra cycling and uh and run to work and they use all of the like ultra gear and run through the streets of london and run from the suburbs and stuff because it's faster and it's very congested and there's a lot of reasons for it and of course like because it's a great thing for your your health and fitness, right? So so while of course it is beautiful to run across the Golden Gate Bridge, I do know that it is popular in other in other places. So that was that was my experience as a as a beginner and in getting into um, fitness. But I don't know if you have anything to add to. Well, I think that. two things came to mind when you were discussing those those things. Like one was like I feel like the that just highlights for me the importance of habit and like once we are doing something as a part of our regular routine it just becomes a part of us and it's like if you commute to work on your bike or you run to work or you go you know for a lunch ride uh you like work and then you take an hour break in the middle of the day like if that's just what you do then that's going to be like one of the most effective ways to like make sure that you're healthy in the long run and that you um can't really deviate much from having the training plan that you are following in place because you just it's just a part of your life um but also like i was thinking about the fact that during 
um, the lockdowns, a lot of people aren't going to work. But then I was thinking, it's like, oh, like that could be for some people, like something that derails their uh, normal commute ride, for example. But it could also just be an excuse to do more riding because, like, maybe they do a commute ride to their own house <laughs> in the morning. Like, if that's the framing that's useful for them, like they go out for an hour and a half ride go to work and then they don't have to commute like home at the end of the day and they don't have to worry about like showering and taking their stuff to and from work so they could actually save a bunch of time um on that end so like maybe they have more room to ride and it can be i think i think it's always good to look for the right framing that's going to help you to do whatever it is that you're trying to do like whether you're trying to be healthy whether you're trying to like um get fitter and stronger whether you're trying to like uh keep a certain habit like if things change like the circumstance changes like covid lockdowns like there's a w there's always a way to reinforce the habits that you want to keep going and i feel like especially when there's something substantial like that your habits might get thrown into disarray because the circumstance changes but i think there's always a way to like um frame things in a way that's going to be effective for you to get get the job done yeah i think that's a great point right like make it a habit incorporate it into your lifestyle try to think beyond for me, beyond the goal of the half marathon, the marathon, whatever the event is, right? Because once you're in the event, you're kind of done. So if you make it more like, hey, this is just how I commute three days a week, or this is what I do. Yeah, then, it's both. Yeah, you'll get through that. Well, I, I think that's actually really great for beginners. What about people who they are doing the the bike to work commute, or they have done centuries and they do ride regularly, but their training is either stale or they've plateaued and they're trying to get like more out of it. Like what, what do you recommend for those people to kind of just break through? Yeah. So I think that is something that comes up a lot. Cause like a lot of the people that I work with are usually like pretty fit. They've probably been doing it for a little while or they've, they've gotten into it to the point where like they're um, maybe just a year or two in and they're fit, but they want to get better. So like a lot of times people um, that that's like exactly what I spend a lot of my attention on. So I think we, we were talking about this a little bit right before we started. And I think there's like a couple of different variations of that. One is like people that get into fitness and they go to the gym or they do like a spin class or some sort of like structured training program that's focused on intensity. And they do those like 45 minute high intensity workouts. And then they see a lot of progress. They get a lot fitter, but then maybe they're not like losing as much weight after a while as they would want to, or they're not really seeing like a lot of fitness gains. And that might be because they've like kind of tapped out their capacity to not their total capacity, but like their capacity within that type of schedule to get the most out of those like 45 minute sessions or whatever it is. So for them, like a lot of times mixing it up and adding more duration and more total training time might be the most effective way to do um, to get to get more gains in their fitness. Um, or if they are limited on time, maybe adjusting like the way in which they structure their workouts and the way in which they um, have their dietary uh, practices around training. And that's, that's one for everyone. Like everyone can probably change their diet to uh, get better recovery and get better results out of the training that they're doing. On the other hand, there's people that like commute and they ride, let's say like five, six, 10 hours a week, and they do a lot of miles, but they you know, they do their commute rides, which are not very intense. And then they do like maybe a fast group ride on the weekends and it's like kind of intense, but it's not very structured. A lot of times for those people that ride a lot or run a lot, but don't do any focused intense training, adding some more intensity and adding some more like focus to their harder workouts is gonna be by far the biggest way that they can make gains. Um, and definitely if you look at physiological studies of athletes, almost always high intensity wins out as the most effective way to get fitter. Um, usually those studies are more short-term and they're not like, you know, five-year studies of elite cyclists and seeing like what, what exact mix of intervals is the best way for them to make fitness gains, but almost always like adding a couple of very intense workouts each week will make anyone fitter who already is training a good bit and has been for a while. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I was in that category at 1.2, right, right. Rode a lot of miles, but I didn't ride a lot of, uh, or didn't uh, do it at a, at a high intensity. And so um, I started doing that. It was like an eye opener because I, I thought like I was really fit and I was really fit compared to where I was. And uh, I think my wife bought me a heart rate monitor. The first time I ever had used one, I, I tried to do some intervals up a monster hill in uh, here in the Bay Area. And like, I didn't know what was going on. Like I was like watching these heart rate numbers and it was like, 
I remember like it like making me completely freaked out, like just seeing the the heart rate number <laughs> change and stuff. Like I was so uncomfortable with it all. Uh, and it was so different and just so beyond anything that was like, talk about going out of your comfort zone. Um, um, it was wild. I think it took me, it, it's funny, I almost don't even know why I continued. Like it was really hard and really difficult. It made me very uncomfortable. And for some reason I just kept pursuing it. it maybe took like six months to just get comfortable with like, looking at a heart rate monitor and like acknowledging like that was my body's response and watching it go places that like it probably had never um gone before and definitely hadn't gone before for that length of time yeah i feel like that's another thing that comes to mind like getting um a gps computer and comparing your times on strava getting a power meter and like finding ways to um put your own fitness in the context of like what is humanly possible can be motivating. I think on the one hand, like if you see that your threshold is 200 watts and you weigh 150 pounds and then you realize that like Chris Froome is your size and his threshold is 400 watts, that could be demotivating because you're like, oh shit, like I'm actually not that fit. Like even though I ride a century every other weekend. But on the other hand, it's like, like maybe you can't be Chris Froome, but you know that humans are capable of so much more than we give ourselves credit for sometimes. And a lot of times like we just need to like mix it up and look for ways to make our, our, our training more challenging than it currently is in some way that's going to be useful for whatever our goals are. Um, so obviously like that person that has a threshold of 200 watts and does a century every other weekend, maybe their biggest you know, training uh, adjustment might not be to add sprints because sprints aren't necessarily going to be the most helpful for them having a good time doing a century ride, but doing like 10 minute hill repeats that are very hard is for sure going to make them a lot fitter if um if they aren't currently doing that yeah it was like a whole new perspective on what i was trying to do right was i just trying to ride around or was i trying to get fitter and maybe that was like the big mental adjustment uh i had to make and, and maybe people have to make right like if you get a lot of miles but they're just kind of all fun and you kind of ride hard and you're not really thinking about it in terms of um your progression and your fitness and like and where you sit like in the world rankings of yeah. probably the most talented cyclists ever in the world right all the way down to like you and and what um uh, unfit people do right that's a whole different way of of looking at it um i don't know and for me like it helped me get through that that plateau and i think for other people like if that's your goal and you want to push through i think that's great and, and i also think like nothing wrong with wanting to like do zone one zone two and just ride around and um and have a great time right like cycling is just a fantastic way to like maintain your weight and like lead a lead a um, healthy life for a very long time yeah i think definitely i think it's good to know like what it is that we're in it for because not everyone's in it for performance not everyone's in it for health either like some people want to just get really fit and race and then move on to something else after they've done it for like 10 years or something like that and you see that sometimes like with professional athletes that retire and then they just like never do it again because they're burnt out on it or or like maybe they enjoyed it at some point but they like lost their joy of doing it because they just did it so much for so long and it was their singular you know focus and became a like a um livelihood for them and, and not a passion anymore but um that being said though i feel like that you're <clears throat> the type of situation in which you and i find ourselves where we're like already pretty fit and we've already like put a lot of work in it it can be more challenging to like look for ways to keep getting better uh when you're already like not necessarily at your your limit but within like the constraints of your schedule and and what you're able to do it can be harder to to continue to see ways of making gains um but i think almost always there are ways of doing that up to a certain point until you're like older and your your body is slowly but surely on the decline uh, but even then i've worked with people who are like in their 50s or 60s and like i give them a training program or like work with them for a little while and within a couple months they are emailing me back saying like oh like i'm going as fast up this climb as i was like back in you know my 40s or something like that and i think a lot of times um yeah we just have a lot more potential than we give ourselves credit for sometimes hey you know i i i love the fact that um if you're uh the, the world record in the half marathon is is held by um people who are uh under uh or just over 25 years old so if you're 40 and your goal is to set the world record um for 65 and above you theoretically have more years to train yeah 
I love that. Like, I think it's just fantastic. Right? It's all a matter of a uh, perspective. Well, hey, what keeps you motivated? I mean, like you could change to set PRs, even though that you're retired and like perhaps not in prime cycling age. I don't want to take anything away from like your fitness and the things that you can do because they're astonishing. Like, <laughs> like some of those KOMs up tunnel road and stuff are like, are, uh, are hotly contested and like you continue to, to, uh, to wear the crown, which I just think is, um, fantastic. So, so how do you stay motivated and like break through, um, your own plateaus? So last year I said like my, I don't know, the two big accomplishments that I would regard myself as having last year was setting the KOM on tunnel and on Piners. Both of those were roads that I'd previously had the KOMs on, but people had beaten me. And I'd, I'd set the KOMs like years before because they were both climbs that I thought were cool and I liked and wanted to have the KOM because they're right near where I lived. Um, but I like hadn't gone after them for a while. I'd focused on like other climbs that I um, cared about. And so like, I wanted to go back to those. And honestly, when I first started training when the lot, like, I, I was already training, but when I ramped up my training in March, when the lockdowns first started, I had in my mind that I wanted to get fitter for climbing to go after some KOMs. And I had tunnel in mind, but I wasn't sure if I would be able to get there in the time that I had to train for it. So I actually just focused entirely on the process. So I like promised myself that I would train every day, at least like a 30 to 40 minute run or like an hour long ride. And usually it was much more than that, but I, I actually focused on the process knowing that I, that's what I needed to do to set myself up for um, any kind of personal best achievement of any, any kind. Um, and so a lot of times, like right now, I'm really disappointed that a couple of years ago, I was in very good shape for the Diablo challenge, but I got doored like a month and a half out. And then I had like knee pain and back pain. And I, I wasn't able, like I had to take a, like a week and a half off and then was just barely getting back into feeling good on the bike as I, as the Diablo challenge was happening. So I like, I rode fine, but it was like, it was a joke compared to like what I would have been capable of if I hadn't had that interruption to my training. So I still have in my mind, like I have the record on Diablo from the challenge. Obviously the tour of California has gone faster, but like in my mind, I would like to go faster up Diablo than I previously have gone in training or at the challenge. And I know that I'm capable of doing that. Um, like physically right now, I think it's just a matter of like, can I create a process that allows me to have enough development over long, like over the course of a season to go for that again. And so um, usually I'll do that kind of uh, mental framing where it's like, I know that I have like one or two like performances that I'd like to accomplish. And then I know that I'm capable of doing it. I know that it's challenging. And then I focus on the process of what it'll take to get me there. So it's like, do I need to train like 15 hours a week? Do I need to do certain types of intervals? And then I'll just focus on like this week, I'm doing these intervals and I'm just like trying to empty the tank, doing these hard workouts. And the fitness will take care of itself over the next like six, eight, nine months, if that's what it will take. Um, and right now it's just a question of whether or not I can allot the time needed to, to do that. <laughs> uh, Cause as you know, I have like different time constraints right now. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the big constraint, right, is like, is like time, I think, for a lot of people who have achieved a certain level of fitness and want to continue. But to, to I would, yeah, exactly, what do you think? For I, I would add to that, though, that, like, no matter what, like, whether or not I can set a PR on Diablo again, which I would love to do, like, I would love to do that. Um, it doesn't matter as far as my desire to be a healthy, fit individual and to enjoy, like, feeling good riding my bike and you know, going for runs and going for hikes and stuff like that. Like a couple of years, like a year and a half ago, I think it was in the summer, my partner and I went on a backpacking trip. It was just like a casual, like maybe 20 mile thing over the course of like a three day weekend. And it was a ton of fun. And it took like zero preparation because both of us were like relatively fit. And it was just like, I, I want to be able to do that when I'm 60, you know? And so in order to be able to do that when I'm 60, I need to keep being active and, and uh, treating my body well, you know, just like you. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. So I think for me, like the, the full summary is like, um, if, if you want to take a long-term view, which I think most people actually desire to, they want to have a long-term view of their health and fitness. You need habits ultimately that like, are just part of your, your lifestyle. So when you're saying about like the commute to work, basically that's just like who I am. I wake up and I do my bike ride in the morning and 
whether I'm in lockdown or whether I'm at work, I just go for the ride. And if it turns out that I'm commuting back to my house, I just come back to my house, right? It's just, it's just like what I what I do. And sometimes I ride really hard. And sometimes I'm in training and sometimes like it's just kind of like a fun, a fun ride. And sometimes with other people and sometimes it's not, right? It, it's just like, it's just my thing. And it's just part of like who I am. And, and I think that that's, if there's anything that you need to do, it's like just incorporate it into like your lifestyle and make it like a, like a habit regardless of the event or the goal or what you're trying to to achieve and I think that's kind of what you were saying too about like hiking and just doing all these different types of things yeah totally and I think that that's <laughs> it reminds me of that Japanese scissor guy um like for for those of you who may not have uh seen this just like look up um like i don't know japanese scissor maker or something on <laughs> on youtube but there's this little video that's like i don't know five or six minutes long about this like 80 ish year old japanese man who is like the the only like um old school like craftsman who makes shears in japan and like there's a lot of people that make knives and swords and stuff but he makes scissors and they're like several thousand dollars a piece and he's been doing it his whole life. And in the video, it's great because he's he's old, but he says like, oh, I feel like I've really, I've really like hit my peak now. Like after after doing it for like 50 or 60 years. And, and I love that. Um, I feel like that's, uh, I don't know, just like the, the task of, of um, anything that you wanna be good at, like you can keep doing it for a long period of time. But then, yeah, for those of us that are trying to um, extend our fitness to new like for, uh, like performance goals, I think that there's almost always ways to squeeze a few more watts out of your legs or like squeeze a few more seconds out of your time on climbs. And it's just about like looking for ways to stretch beyond what you've previously done and like looking for ways to, to challenge yourself in training. But you have to have that, that process in place. And I feel like that, like the identity of like being the, the Japanese scissors guy or the identity of being an athlete that like goes riding every day or like almost every day is a really powerful thing. Like if you identify as being a certain way and you take action on that, like that will set you up for long-term success. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's like the key the key thing. And like the tunnel cam was like a 20 year thing, you know? <laughs> I couldn't have done it if I hadn't had those 20 years of training beforehand. Yeah, I, absolutely. I think like it, it appreciate the the compounding result of the years and years of training and like whatever it is, uh, making scissors, riding bikes, running, right? That like, uh, that as you get better at it, obviously the like, gains are smaller, um, but they're still there. And, uh, and um, there's something to be said for like the art of just pursuing that. Well, I think that's good. Anything uh, else you want to say? No, that's good. I don't know, just have a, a patient, like, I feel, I feel like it's good to be um, ambitious about trying to achieve something that's meaningful to you, like, like for all of us, but also to be patient enough to give ourselves a chance to do it. Yeah, no, that's, uh, I think that's an excellent way to end today's video. Well, hey, uh, thanks for watching. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back next week. Take care. Bye.